Thank you for agreeing to talk to us. There's a story that's going to be told, and I would rather be the one telling it. Everyone knew who the family was. We were a part of IBLP as early as I can remember. The big It's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It's Friday, May 19th, 2023. It is time to dig through some archives of records, court records that I have had for a long time related to the Duggar family. And I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, a dynamic between Jill Dillard and her family, uh, Jill Duggar Dillard and her family and sort of where she stands with them at this point in time. Now, I also wanted to talk with you about something about this new upcoming docu-series. So in the docu-series, obviously Jill's going to be involved in it and she's gonna be talking about her family's relationship in regards to uh, the Institute and in Basic Life Principles and share her story of growing up in this group culture as well as her story related to uh, what happened in her home. And one of the things in the in the teaser is that they talked a lot about authority and the authority within the structure of the Institute of Basic Life Principles, which is the umbrella of authority where the father has full authority over the family and then the mom is under the father and then the kids are under the mom. And because of the way of the structure of this system, mothers are have to be obedient and follow the dad regardless. So relationships are not equal. And Michelle Duggar has had, in many ways, been the kind of person that's had to submit and uh, deal with Jim Bob, regardless of what she thinks about things. And one thing that Jill says that her mom believes and thinks is that Michelle wishes that Jim Bob would just sometimes shut up. Yes. And it has to do with how he treats people. I'm not kidding. So let's dive into this topic. Before we do, please do me a big favor and give this video a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to my channel if you've not yet subscribed by clicking on the subscribe button down below. Make sure to leave a comment if you have something to say. Share this video with your friends. And if you are brand new here, I have been covering the Duggar family since 2018. I have an entire playlist on the Duggars, on Josh Duggar, on cults, and I have gone through almost all aspects of the Institute and Basic Life Principles. So if I don't show you a source to something, it's based on prior knowledge or a video that I've done in the past. So in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through some of the documents from when Jill Duggar and her sisters ended up trying to sue the county and the city and the police department for the release of records of what Josh Duggar had done to his sisters. And in this process when they sued the city, which ultimately the, the case was dismissed because the police and the law enforcement and all the people involved, the judge found there was absolutely no malicious intent in their release of the records, that while it was probably like negligent in that they shouldn't have released the information, they didn't do it to hurt anyone and there was no evidence that there was some sort of conspiracy against the Duggar family. On top of that, they had immunity. And so Jill and her sisters, though, were in this lawsuit for years and had to provide depositions and uh, interviews with experts because they were suing for damages. And so they were trying to attach all of the hurt and pain that they were going through related to the release of records rather than the hurt and pain of what would have happened with Josh. Okay. And they all were not going to sue Josh. And the reason why they weren't going to sue Josh is because they were following some sort of biblical principle where you don't sue your loved ones and you try to work things out by going to elders and you just stay out of the court system when it comes to family. Now, when it comes to J J uh, Jill, she was by far the most candid about her relationship with her father, and she was also the most candid about her relationship with her mother. And she was also candid about the boundaries that she has had to set up with her family. So Jill has, in many ways, been 
shunned by Jim Bob. So Jim Bob will not allow Jill to go over to the house unless he's there or he gives her permission. Just to remind you of something that Derek said several years ago, this is what he said about Jim Bob and, and not allowing them over. He said, it's harder now because we're not allowed at the house when Jim Bob isn't there. Jill even had to ask Jim Bob permission to go over to the house to help her sister when she was in labor because her sister wanted her help, but Jill couldn't provide the assistant until until he we got it cleared with Jim Bob. Jim Bob will not allow just Jill over because Jill has a nose ring, Jill drinks alcohol, and Jill asked for money for being on counting on. She also had to hire an attorney to get paid. Another question that always comes up in comments is, did the kids get paid? No. In the early seasons and well into counting on, the girls were not paid, the adults were not paid, and it wasn't until Jill had to basically sue her father in mediation with an attorney through wage claims that she received minimum wage for her time when she was the show leader and the like runner of Jill and Justice Counting On. Like imagine having your own reality show and you're not even paid for it. Yeah, that was Jill's life. And so after that happened, some of the kids got paid and some of them negotiated their own contracts, but not all of them did and not all of them were paid. So no, the bulk of the wealth was given to Jim Bob. So when it comes to her relationship with Jim, I just wanted to share a couple things. This is what she candidly said about her father after she decided to quit and not do what he said. So when she decided to go outside of the umbrella of authority, make her own decisions for her own family, she said she saw a brand new side of her dad. A whole new side of my dad once my husband and I started making decisions that were in the best interest for our family, but not in his best interest. Sadly, I realized that he had become pretty controlling, fearful, and reactionary. He was verbally abusive. Our relationship is not good. It got pretty toxic. We occasionally text on a family group thread, but I don't feel comfortable uh, being around him and just hanging out. It isn't good for my own mental health right now. And although I long to see our relationship restored, at this point, my husband and I have had to create some pretty strict boundaries right now to protect our sanity. We pretty much only see him right now at weddings and funerals. I think sometimes he wishes that we would just get over it and go back to how things used to be, doing things his way. When I see him at weddings and stuff, he's cordial, but I wouldn't want to talk things out with him in a smaller setting. Plus, there are just too many triggers and stuff for me to have to process after being around him. It's emotional taxing and I don't have the energy right now. This was what she said about her dad in 2021. So she calls her dad verbally abusive, controlling, fearful, reactionary because she will not do what he says. Okay, she's not going to obey his authority. And Jim Bob believes because of the structure of the IBLP that he can have full control over his kids because they're still supposed to go for him to counsel. But Jim Bob believes that as a parent, he can control his kids no matter what, regardless if it's leave and cleave, like there's no such thing as leave and cleave. So when she pushed back and said, I'm not going to do things your way, that's when things got bad with her dad. As long as she was in line and not going against the grain, everything was fine. And so that is why you will see the kids not speak negatively about their father because it will have, an, they'll get an adverse reaction from him. Ginger was very gingerly <laughs> when talking about her family and it's likely because she fears the reaction of her father. Another thing that she said about Jin, about Michelle that I thought was kind of interesting is that a lot of people have talked in great details about whether or not some of the Duggars are not taking care of their mental health. Obviously with the girls going into the situation that they went through as children and not having had therapy other than Jill, by the way, Jill's the only one that's gone through professional licensed therapy and she continues to do it to this day. Uh, no one else has seen a therapist or a psychologist. But she says that her mom suffered from depression. Um, and she all, so this is what she said about her family of origin. She said, her natural mother suffered from depression. To punish her mother took away privileges. Corporal punishment in, typically involved spanking or slapping. And Jill reports that at least once her mother hit her with an object as a form of punishment. She was usually able to talk to her father about problems. Her father was reasonably strict and allowed a fair amount of freedom. Punishments sometimes resulted when her father discovered that she had misbehaved. 
Her father would yell or take away privileges. Corporal punishment usually included spanking or slapping, and at least once her father hit her with an option, object as a form of punishment. So they're not going to talk about every single time. They're going to just try to give like generalizations. So corporal punishment. But what I thought was interesting is that she reported that Michelle suffered from depression or had depression while she was growing up. And Michelle has talked about some struggles she's had with an eating disorder. But one thing that Michelle never talked about was her own depression. And I do wonder how much of the repeated back to back to back to back pregnancies played into the factor of Michelle having depression. Postpartum depression is a really big issue for women. And it's something that not a lot of women will talk about. I mean, I think today it's better, but because hormones are shifting after birth, there really is a biological response by the body that can cause depression. And so I wonder for how many years Michelle could have been battling depression on top of having to be controlled and then having to put out a baby every year. Jim Bob got her pregnant constantly because they were demanding a baby a year. That was her goal, is her mission on earth for the IBLP was to bring as many children as possible into the world so that they can overpopulate the country uh, and take over the world and the, and the government. But when it comes to her mom, despite the fact that her mom has dealt with depression, which, you know, when you start to think about Michelle's life, it actually makes me very sad. A lot of people are hard on Michelle because they're like, oh, she didn't protect her daughters and she uh, wasn't there for her kids. And I totally understand that. Like, I feel like Michelle for sure uh, made has made mistakes as a parent, but I also, I can feel for Michelle in that I feel like Michelle is the first victim of Jim Bob. I've said that a lot on this channel, but she really was the first person that he targeted and then through her got all of his kids who he targets. So she's just like the first one in the line of fire with Jim Bob. And he specifically pinned her down, picked her out because she was naive to religion. She had recently just been become born again. She didn't grow up in the same kind of religious fervor as Jim Bob. And so he believed he could lead her because she didn't know anything about religion. And then shortly after they date, they get married before she even turns 18. He convinces her dad to let him date, marry her when she's like only 17 years old. And they start doing the IBLP and they go into these conferences almost immediately after they start their marriage. Meaning that she was a normal kid, a normal kid in, in high school. She dated, she had boyfriends, she kissed, she was a cheerleader, she wore pants. She was totally vivacious and like outgoing and everyone that knew her back then said that she was just like the sweetest girl. And then she met Jim Bob and he isolated her. He got her into a cult. He gets her to change. Her whole life gets changed from being this vivacious, outgoing, gregarious young woman into the shell of a woman that has no ambition of her own other than to be the brood mare for Jim Bob and submit to him. And that's a lot of burden. And then on top of that, not only did she have depression, but I've talked to so many people that were with Michelle during the period of time that she was having all these pregnancies. And she was in so much pain due to these pregnancies because her body had no time to recover that she was like dealing with massive back problems nearly the entirety of her life that she was having these kids. And she had kids for over 20 years. That's a long time to be pregnant and very little breaks. And she had miscarriages in the, mi in the middle of that. And she had twins twice. She had C-sections. She had V-backs. When you think about what her body went through, it's surprising to me that she is still standing, frankly. She was so busy being pregnant, obviously, and then dealing with the hormones. And then Jill says she's depressed and that she still had is unable to navigate how to deal with her husband. And then on top of that, her kids, there's too many of them. She can't care for them. She's relying on her daughters to take care of them because she doesn't have the ability to do so. And she's not as present of a mother as she should be, obviously. She has her own struggles with Jim. And so this is what Jill says. She's still the same person with a caring personality. I know she's hurting and she just wishes that our relationship was on good terms and that my dad would just keep his mouth shut sometimes. She wishes there was something she could do to fix things and occasionally she tries. 
I'm okay seeing her a little more than my dad, but it's still awkward and triggering. So when you think about M Michelle, who is in her 50s, she's got 19 kids with this man, and even Michelle, as an adult female, does not have the ability to make her husband be nicer to her kids. She does not have the ability or the strength or the wherewithal to encourage her husband and her husband will not listen to her about her pain. So Jim Bob's behavior affects his daughters, it affects his wife and his wife cannot convince Jim Bob to be nicer to his kids, to shut his mouth, to listen to his kids, to stop being overbearing. So she wishes that he would shut his mouth. One of the things I will tell you about back in the early 2000s, I think I've told you, I said I know a lot because I've spoken to so many people. One of the people that was a part of the church that they were involved in when Josh Duggar did the stuff to the girls and it became this huge deal in the church and they had to figure out what to do, it was the same time that Michelle was also struggling to find her own voice in her marriage. And one of the people that was at the church told me that Michelle was looking for help allegedly from the elders because Jim was steamrolling her. Like she couldn't say anything. She couldn't, she didn't have a voice. She didn't have a choice. She couldn't convince him of anything. He didn't respect her opinion. He treated her like trash. He didn't, he discarded her and looked at her more as like an object than as a human. And she wanted help from the elders to help hold him accountable and to help show him like and guide him like this is not how you should treat your wife. This is not how you should treat your family. And that's been an ongoing issue in their marriage for decades because Michelle doesn't have a voice. And I've talked to a lot of people that all say that Jim treats her like garbage. like And Josh treats Anna like garbage because that's how Jim Bob treats Michelle. He doesn't respect her opinion. He doesn't like when women speak. He doesn't acknowledge women. So I'll tell you another story is I was talking to someone that was actually at an event that the Duggars were at years ago. So back in the day, the Duggars used to go to all these different churches and at the church events, they would speak. And then after the events, they would have books and they would sign their books. And this woman that was at the church said that she was in line standing, to, she was in the auditorium and Jim was sort of over there and she like went up to him and tried to talk to him and she said that Jim would not even look her in the eye and wouldn't even respond to her. So when she was by herself, she tried to talk to Jim Bob Duggar and Jim Bob would not even acknowledge her because she was a woman. But then when she and her husband were together and they were in line to have the book signed, Jim spoke to her as long as her husband was with her. So Jim Bob would not acknowledge or even look a woman in the eye because he felt like he was better than her and above her and would only look at her and speak to her through her husband. And I've talked to multiple women that have had this exact same experience with him where he will not speak to women because of how he views women as less than. So that's Michelle in a nutshell. She's not viewed as anyone that has any pull or say and Jim rules his family with an iron fist and no accountability. And because of the belief system, he doesn't have to let her do anything. And he's only following what Gothard has taught him to do. What never made sense to me about Gothard's teachers, the purpose of the church, at least when I was growing up in one, is there was supposed to be elders that could hold people accountable. There was supposed to be, you're supposed to follow all these different rules about how to mediate things and that nobody is above the law and that everyone should be able to hum be humble and submit and not only that but cr the christianity calls for men to like be kind to their wives and to treat their wives like christ would treat the church with love and compassion and jim bob is clearly not doing those things so it always made me wonder like why would you develop this system where men have no accountability and can do whatever they want and not call for these men to be kinder more gentle and caring compassionate men and reasonable and thoughtful instead of dictators. So Michelle, through Jill, we learn, wishes that Jim Bob would shut up, wishes that he would stop being so difficult, dealt with depression, 
and has struggled for years to find her voice. And with this upcoming documentary, we might learn more about some of these aspects. We may learn more about Jill's trauma. Uh, a lot of people were asking and, and wanting Jill to expound and expand more about what happened to her with Josh. And I just wanna like be very sensitive to this. I actually find it rather crass when people wanna know the nitty gritty gory details about what's happened to someone. During trial, we learned some details through Bobby Holt's testimony, but just remember that Jill's a human being and her trauma is her trauma and she should not ever be required to go into detail about what happened to her. It should be enough for people to understand that she was essayed without her having to go through the gory details of what Josh did. Because frankly, it shouldn't matter what he did and what he did to her. It should only matter that it happened and that like she's saying, I'm a victim of this. We don't need to know the details because that's like trauma and triggering for her. And then another thing is that, you know, she might be shunned from her family in many ways, but she is also in equally doing this to protect her own sanity. So she's put up boundaries herself because she's in therapy. And one of the things about therapy is that you need to put boundaries up for things that trigger you to protect yourself from what's going to make you feel traumatized or have, you know, the flashbacks or dealing with all of the, the, the pain and the, the anxiety. And her parents will not go to therapy with her. She has asked to mediate with them. She has asked to come to like, um, a space where it's neutral, where they can work things out and try to figure things out together and they refuse to attend. She has taken all the steps necessary to try to create like a space where they can actually get back and have a conversation. And Jim Bob refuses because Jim will not talk to anyone that's not affiliated with the IBLP. He will not do anything related to therapy. He doesn't believe in uh, any sort of drugs for his mental health. And that's because Mr. Gothard says that all of those things are bad. Like you shouldn't see psychologists, you shouldn't see psychiatrists, you shouldn't take medications. Jim Bob's own father has dealt with severe mental health issues according to Deanna. And people that I talk to about Jim say that he has paranoia. They say he's delusional. He has these like grand, like, delusions of grandeur where he really does feel like he's a god in many ways and you just wonder like if the Duggars were part of something where they weren't in a system that didn't take care of their mental health how different things could be and Jim could very well be dealing with the same things his dad did and it's just like history repeating itself which is why it's so commendable that Jill has done so much above and beyond what others in her family have done. Ginger wrote a book but she's still stuck in Jim Macar John MacArthur's world and Ginger herself has not done any therapy. It's a very different place for Jill to speak out than Ginger. And it doesn't mean that Ginger's voice doesn't matter. It's just Ginger is not on the same, like, le she's in a different, like, place than Jill. Jill has detached herself, done the work, and tried to understand things. Ginger has just changed from one group to another and hasn't gone to therapy. And not, therapy doesn't work for everyone, but... For what they've gone through, it would be healthy. And Jill says that as hard as it is, it's worked for her and it's helped her marriage and it's helped her. So Michelle wishes that Jim Bob would shut up. And because of their faith, she can't divorce him. But she should, in my opinion. Again, this is why Michelle is Jim Bob's first victim, in my opinion. And I hope that we hear some aspects about how wives are treated in this series so people can really understand what it's like to be a wife to a monster of the men created by the IBLP. Tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below. Bye, guys.